Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate very much you uh, holding this hearing. Uh, the first question is for uh, Dr. Disborough. It's a pretty quick question, which is relates to probabilities. Um, those of us who've been in the uh, business world have to deal with probabilities. People in NASA, I'm sure, do. Doctors certainly have to. Uh, what's the probability that we'll have a generally available vaccine for the American public uh, by the end of the year? What's your What's your personal sense of what the probability is? 50-50, 90%? 20%, what's the likelihood? So I'm, I'm not a betting person, but um, <laughs> if we don't set lofty goals, we will never achieve uh, those goals. And so we are working very hard across the federal government to make sure that we are doing everything we can to expedite the I, development. I know, I know, I know that. I, I know we all have lofty goals. I'm not asking for goals. I'm asking for the probability. What's the probability? Is it 50-50, 90-10, 60-40? What, what's your sense of what the likelihood is we'll actually have a vaccine available for the general public, let's say by the beginning of the year, um, for, the, uh, for the population of our country. I know what our goal is, of course, our goal is 100%, but what, what's, what's your sense of the probability? You've been in this vaccine world for a long time. Uh, yes, you have some I experience have. here. What's the, what should we be thinking about? And, and that's why I don't like to you know, set either uh, timelines on okay. when vaccines okay. will be. Okay, never mind, never mind. You don't want to answer the question, we'll move on. Uh, second question, uh, Dr. Collins, which is, uh, the Abbott machine, it, it's already providing uh, information, I guess, almost on a real-time basis. Is uh, it, it, What's wrong with sort of making a lot more of those and using that as a, um, a machine that could be available at most businesses, retailers, and so forth? Is it is it just inadequate? Is it the false negatives it gives? Uh, uh, but, but it strikes me that we already have a technology that works. Am I wrong on that? No, it is a great machine, Senator. This is the Abbott ID Now approach. Uh, it does provide you point of care, and it does it very quickly in the space of 15 minutes. Uh, it does require having the special machine, and of course, there's a limited number of those machines out there. I think it's 18,000 or something like that. And to be able to really meet the need, uh, that would have to go up substantially, and the machines are, are not exactly inexpensive. I think the other concern has been <clears throat> that it does have about a 15% false uh, negative rate. If you're in a circumstance where you really, really don't want to miss a diagnosis of somebody who's already carrying the virus, uh, you'd like to have something that has a higher sensitivity than that, and I know they're working on how to make that happen. But So it's great. It's certainly one of the most exciting things we've got right now, but we think we could even do better. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm, your, your judgment is a lot better, more experienced than mine in this regard, but it does seem to me that given you, in fact, we have a test that works, uh, it can perhaps be made more sensitive. Uh, if we were to devote a lot of resources to making a lot of these machines, perhaps having some other people around the world or around the country at least making these machines on an accelerated basis, why we could uh, we could fulfill the need that uh, that we're talking about with technology that already exists. Because the probability of finding a new technology, um, you know, I, I hope we can find that. But it strikes me that this kind of machine has uh, has some potential. Finally, the last question for you, uh, Dr. Collins. Uh, you know, I, I've been sort of puzzled by the uh, conflicting data that I see, and I'm sure you see the same thing. Uh, the, uh, the reports that came out of Massachusetts as to the uh, number of people there that were asymptomatic, the people that, the the, of course, the testing in New York that suggested over 20 percent of the people there uh, had already uh, had COVID-19. Uh, the prison test as well uh, in five states in the South, which, as I recall, 93 percent of the people who had tested positive never had any symptoms. Um, and then the experience of Sweden, uh, which said we're, we're really not going to test everybody and we're, we're going to let the economy keep going. Um, do we really need to have the kind of testing we're talking about? Or, or, or does this information suggest that given so many people that are asymptomatic, uh, I was in a hearing yesterday with the Homeland Security uh, Committee, the, the suggestion was between 50 and 90 percent of the people uh, that get COVID-19 have no symptoms. If that's the case, uh, should we let this run its course through the population and not try and test every person? I'm, I'm saying that a bit as a, as a straw man, but I'm interested in your perspective. Well, I appreciate your putting it forward as a straw man, because while it is true uh, that lots of people seem to get this virus without any symptoms at all, and the estimates are that maybe 60 percent of new cases are transmitted by such people, it's still the case that 74,000 people have died from this disease. And so the people who are out there infected who may not themselves be suffering are passing this on, becoming a vector to others who are vulnerable with chronic illnesses or in the older age group 
and sometimes young people too. Let's not say that they're immune. There are certainly plenty of sad circumstances of young people who really you would not have thought would be hard hit by this, who have gotten very sick or even died. So I, I think it is extremely unusual to have a virus like this that is so capable of infecting people without symptoms, but having them then spread it on. We just haven't encountered something like that before. But it doesn't mean that it's not a terribly dangerous virus uh, for those people who aren't so lucky and who get very sick and end up in the ICU and perhaps lose their lives. The only way we're really going to put a stop to that is to know who the people are who are infected, even if they have no symptoms, get them quarantined, follow their contacts. It's just good, solid, shoe leather public health. Uh, and we've learned it over the decades, and it applies here too. Thank you, Dr. Collins. Mr. Chairman.